I'm Debbie Gatling, President of the Acton Women's Club. Will you please rise for the flag salute and then remain standing for our invocation. Ready? Our invocation today will be given by our chaplain, Judith Fox. I received an invitation to go to a party. It was a, a bunch of old high school friends getting together. I would like to have done that, but it was in Austin, Texas, a little bit too far away. I want to share with you the quote that was at the bottom of the invitation. You don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. I like that bit of wisdom. And I started playing around with the quote a little bit. You don't stop having fun because you get old. You get old because you stop having fun. And then one more. I want us to think about this one for a bit. You don't lose your passion for living and doing because you get old. You get old because you lose your passion. The wisdom here for us is this. Whatever you're put here to be doing, do it with your might. Do it with creativity and enthusiasm. Our passion for life and our love for others keeps us young at heart and lets us live with abundant joy. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful today for our friends, for our feelings of community here in Acton, and for our passions that give us a sense of purpose in living. We are thankful for our abilities to care for others and to work to meet the needs of students and others in our community. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much to Judith. We're very fortunate to have Judith as our club's chaplain. Our monthly meetings begin with her inspiring, relevant, and reverent words. I'm so pleased all of you could join us today. Our last several events have been filled to capacity, and it's no surprise that today's wonderful star-studded luncheon has a, had a waiting list for weeks. First, let me be clear. Public speaking is not my strong point. <laughs> Many of you at some point today, I bet, might think I could do a better job. <laughs> to you, I'd say you're probably right. And I hope you might consider running for president of Acton Women's Club. <laughs> We're always looking for willing new leadership. I know many of you might be thinking, wow, I'm sure glad I'm not up there. <laughs> For those, I appreciate your compassion. And now, with that cleared up, and your ex expectations of my abilities where they should be, <laughs> we'll get started. As I usually do at the beginning of our luncheons, I'm going to take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about Acton Women's Club. Our organization has a long standing in Acton dating back to 1930. In the early days, Acton Women's Club members provided funds for local children to attend summer camps. <clears throat> members sponsored a school milk fund and sewed layettes for expected new babies. Members also provided supplies and equipment for the, the church and held ice cream socials. Proceeds from the first bazaar to raise funds came to $32.71. Today our membership rolls top 65 women. We meet the first Wednesday each month at 11 a.m. 
and in usually in women are in members' homes. We're in a, a very active club with 35 to 40 members usually attending meetings. After the business of monthly meetings is completed, we enjoy a wonderful potluck lunch together. We do not meet during the months of July or August, and in January, we forgo our regular meeting and we, we enjoy a field trip together. This club has some of the best cooks in town. I believe that knowing a wonderful lunch awaits us and smelling the delicious food during our meetings helps us cut to the quick and take care of business more efficiently. I know that this group of ladies shares a unique camaraderie and it may have something to do with those wonderful lunches. Annually, we host two luncheons, the Fall Awards Luncheon in November, which you're attending today, and the Scholarship Luncheon in May. We tackle two epic rummage sales, one in October and one in March. These four events get our full attention, and their success fuels, our, fuels the support we're able to offer and return to the community for the year. We participate in many community events, including the 4th of July Parade, and recently we facilitated the Candidates Forum for Acton Town Council. Here are some of the ways that Acton Women's Club expends efforts and funds to help around town. We've established a volunteer program to assist Santa Clarita Valley Food Pantry every month when they visit Acton. They're the only outreach service providing food on a regular basis to our community. We also collect non-perishable food each month at our meetings for the pantry. We support the Adopt a Highway program and keep Crown Valley Road tidy with four cleanup days each year. We continue to support and donate to ASMO, the Acton Schools Music Organization. Harmonic Bronze, Vasquez High School, Culinary Arts Program, Acton Community Club, and Acton Aguadulce Arts Council. In October, we co-sponsored the International Day of the Girl Program with Friends of Aguadulce Library. We award donations to our district schools each fall, and we award scholarships to deserving Acton High School graduates. Last spring, we awarded seven $1,000 scholarships. Since the beginning, the goals of our club have remained constant, to work for the welfare of our children, our schools, and our community. This is what's most important and provides our focus. If you're not already a member, we invite you to consider joining. Kathy Milligan is in charge of membership. Um, Where's Kathy? She has information, so if you're interested, see Kathy today. Now, before I move ahead with introductions, we're going to take care of a little lunch and business. Um, we're going to be having a drawing for the door prize, and I think that that's a holiday votive. And the way you participate in that, you write your name on the back of your lunch ticket to be. Want to, if you want to participate in that, be sure you put your lunch ticket with your name on the back in the bowl by the door. So take care of that if you haven't done that already. And I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Tino with the raffle committee to explain about the silent auction and our raffle today. Hello ladies. I'm so glad you're all here. Everybody can hear can everybody hear me? Yes. Perfect. So um, our all of our raffle items um, at this luncheon are donated um, by our women in the club. And they've done a wonderful job. So if you haven't bought tickets yet, 
Tickets are on sale at the table up there. You get an envelope with a number on the outside of the envelope. They're $10 for an envelope, and there's 15 chances inside the envelope. And you put them in the little bags next to the item that you would like. And when we get ready to um, start raffling them off, make sure you have your tickets out because we will just call your number. And um, we also have the silent auction. We have three lovely items over here on the silent auction. The first one is a um, tippy hedron basket, and um, it has two um, gift certificates to attend a daytime Shambhala Preserve Safari, which is, would be absolutely fabulous, and um, some of Tippy's um, movies in there, all signed, um, a Roar DVD, um, some um, photographs signed by Tippy, and um, the Cats of Shambhala book signed by her, a towel, all kinds of things. Just, just come up, you can read the whole little list there. There's just all kinds of wonderful things in there. And then we have some jewelry here made by um, our, one of our members, um, Sandy Mulcahy. It's a one-of-a-kind um, jewelry handcrafted by her. Uh, the set includes a necklace, bracelet, and earrings. They are made from freshwater pearls. Savarsky crystals and with some silver accents. And the necklace also features a really pretty fleur-de-lis at the bottom. And then um, the last thing is a gourmet dinner party for eight. And it's provided by our women in the club. Um, you can have a fun evening with friends. The event's going to be held at our member Sandy Matson's beautiful hilltop home. The date will be arranged later. The party will include all the food prepared by the Acton Women's Club, our wonderful, they, they cook very, very, very good. Um, we will have a mixologist, a sommelier, servers, and entertainment. Um, food can be decided after the date is chosen. And the evening will start off with a social hour that will feature a signature cocktail served by our own mixologist and some tasty appetizers. Social hour will be followed by dinner, which will include wine with each course, all served by a sommelier and uh, some saucy French servers. <laughs> then enjoy a gourmet dessert bar and the evening and the evening with after dinner drinks. So everybody can come up and bid. The bidding has already been started. We will give you. Um, like five minutes at the end and let you know when it's going to close. So, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. All right, now you know how that works. <laughs> this is a quiet lunch now. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to continue on with uh, introductions. And it's going to be my pleasure to introduce you to the Women's Club. And hold your applause, because if you don't, we'll be here all day. I'm going to start with our club's officers and chairman. Ladies, will you please rock, please stand, and then remain standing as I call your names. Immediate past president, Sherry Mercier. Treasurer, Victoria Taylor. Secretary, Kelly Tino. Director, Lee Jennings. Director, Carrie McLean. Director and Rummage Sale Chairman, Tina, Ty Tina Steibel. <laughs> Chaplain, Judith Fox. Membership, Kathy Milligan. Sunshine, Lisa White. Advertising, Yolanda Ayalo. Historian and webmaster, Kathleen Larson. Social director, Sandy Madsen. Chairman of Publicity, Secret Sisters, and Adopt-a-Highway, Val de Kroll. Now, will all active and associate members please rise. <laughs> Of women is efficient, 
motivated, and energetic. They are tremendously generous and share a wonderful fe fellowship. Thank you for your friendship and dedication, ladies. There are three very special members to Acting Women's Club. Will lifetime member Sandy Madsen, Tina Steibel, and our honorary member Margaret Gonder please rise. <laughs> Due to their extraordinary efforts in our community and club, these three ladies have been bestowed very special recognition by our members. We extend our most sincere appreciation to them. Our Acton Woman of the Year Award Program dates back to 1995. These special ladies are listed by name in today's program. I hope you'll take a moment and peruse the list. We are very proud of the wonderful, wonderful women this award represents. Will all previous Acton Women of the Year please rise? Yes.
Well, um, good afternoon and thank you very much. Our school is going to use your very generous donation to pay for an accelerated math site license. And what accelerated math is, it's very similar to accelerated reader. How many of you are uh, familiar with the AR program? Uh, basically, it's a computer-based or web-based program that allows the teachers to individualize math instruction that is aligned with Common Core. And it's an independent program where students can have some um, intervention and also some enrichment. So we very much appreciate this very generous donation and you're helping all of our kids at Metal Art, which is the best school in the universe, to <laughs> succeed. So thank you very much. Will Principal Mary Crumridge please come forward? Okay, well, thank you for the invitation of, of having me here to represent uh, High Desert as our school. Um, I know I'm the recipient of it, but um, truly all of our students and parents and staff members are truly a recipient of it. Um, we, uh, as you know, we have our Medal of Honor program that um, we brought two years to the district. And here at High Desert, Marilyn Alford has been a key in instrumenting that throughout our campus. Um, last year, when I came on board, we established a Medal of Honor week within our school site to help get that within uh, our curriculum through an advisory period. Um, we've expanded that this year to do that as well as put it on our campus for aesthetics. Um, we've joined with the elementary school in bringing on our scholarly behaviors as a, a K-8 program to align with our Medal of Honor. And in addition, we've brought those terms of excellence and courage, uh, integrity onto our campus through the use of uh, poll banners that you would see um, on the polls. And there's Medal of Honor on one, and then there's Welcome to High Desert. The idea is to kind of fill the campus a little bit aesthetically, to expose the, the, ch the children to things that we want them to always remember, and to help us guide them when uh, they may be making poor choices, point to things, talk to us a little bit about an integrity of that, talk to us a little bit about um, your choices. And with responsibility and honesty right in front of you, it's kind of hard to uh, not portray that characteristic. So that is um, what we are after, and uh, our next step in that is to put the words on each of our buildings so that the campus is surrounded with eight words of Medal of Honor and the two that the district has brought um, in as well, so that when students are on campus and our families are on campus, it is a scholarly atmosphere, and they are exposed to the things that you want to instill in your children, and we appreciate the support of the Women's Club for that. Thank you. Principal Tyga Bell, will you please come forward? And of course, Tyga Bell is the principal of, of Vasquez High School. Hi, everyone. I've been told 30 seconds, and all my peers are staring at me, so I'll be really quick with you. Um, for the first 20 years of Vasquez High School, really wasn't uh, a space dedicated to teachers and students working together on research projects in the lab. And so last year, uh, we had taken the donation from the Women's Club, along with some great community donations and our PTSO, and we combined that together and opened a research lab with 30 computers and internet access for our students. And the great thing about it is that teachers can actually take kids from the classroom, sign up for a period, and take the kids in the room and use it, sign up by period. For the first 20 years, you know, we had a couple computers in each room, and students would just have to train off, or you know, we're lucky when the library opened, we were able to, kids can go there, but it's just not convenient. So what we want to do with this year is add six more stations, because our class cap is 36, so we're at 30 of 36, we want to fill that up, and we want to add a teaching uh, station as well. We have the desk for it, but we don't have the technology so that teachers can model 
uh, research on the web and, and basically flesh out the lab and that will go with us to the new school. We actually have a location for that as well. So just wanted you to know that last year's donation has already been used in a, in a good way and we're going to add to that this year. And, uh, we're just very fortunate to have you guys as a community organization helping us out. So thank you very much, ladies. Thank you very much. <clears throat> to, our, to our three principals, we just say thank you. And uh, I want to I wanna let you know that Acton Women's Club is extremely pleased to be able to help our schools with their plans. I know that I speak for each and every one of us that um, we're, we're tremendously grateful for the work that you do. All right, now I believe they're going to clear our salad away and serve us lunch. Lunch today is being catered by Raymond Bontempo of Distinctive Catering, and our servers are uh, here from Vasquez High School Culinary Arts. Their student service. Also, our salad and our dessert are being prepared this luncheon by Vasquez Culinary Arts, and they're under the direction of their teacher, Heather Koo. There are tip jars on your tables. And the gratuity that you provide them today will be split amongst the student servers. And I hope you enjoy your meal. criteria for a special award to be presented at this luncheon. A, a committee met to set the following criteria. The special recognition award will be presented to an active community member who has contributed to the well-being of our community, its environs, and its culture. The recipient should be an exemplary ambassador for our community in the spirit of goodwill. The recipient cannot be a current member of the Acton Women's Club. It is no wonder Tippi Hedren was unanimously selected to receive our club's first special recognition award. Sandy Madsen, 
will introduce our other guest. We honor Tibby today for who she is and what she has accomplished in her profession as an actor and as the founder of, and dead mother too, the big cats, but as the founder of Shamala and the Roar Foundation. But more importantly to our After Women's Club, we honor what Tibby has contributed to and how she participates in our After Women's community. As Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. Tibby has appeared on many of those throughout the world, but the stage we honor her for today is the Acton stage. Her contributions to our community are numerous and are highlighted in your program for you to read. She contributes in her own unique way, as her incredibly busy schedule permits. Recently, she and other community leaders met with community leaders from Kings County in Northern California to discuss ways to derail, if you will, the high-speed rail that threatens their community and ours. She has opportunities in the media to carry our message and does so, passionately and fearlessly. This is just one of the many of her efforts on our community's behalf. She is always giving back. In honor of your special recognition award, my husband, Kent Manson, has created the award to give to you today. You may take, it, take the... It is a lamp that he created, made with rare translucent alabaster as the base that he formed on a lathe. It's illuminated, as you can see from within. On the lamp base are colored rock discs. One is engraved with your name. I'm sorry. One is engraved with your name. Another is an obsidian carving of an owl. <clears throat> which the ancient Greeks used as a symbol of wisdom on their coin. I'm sorry. <laughs> it is a beautiful creation, as are you. You have a glow about you always. Your inner beauty shines through. You have made wise choices in your life. You when you take this home and turn it on, reflect on all you have accomplished in your 84 years. And let your light continue to shine in the years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tippi Hedren, our guest of honor.
you know, we had two homes in Beverly Hills, and I was traveling all over the world and, you know, doing incredible things. And, and um, as the movie went on, and on, <laughs> and on, and um, incredible things happened during that film that uh, we never expected. We really didn't know what we were doing with those big cats. We do now. That's why they're all behind fences and can't get every out ever, which is unfortunate. Uh, but um, that film led me to another life that I really never ever expected. And um, uh, but uh, getting back to to Acton. The, the longer I was here, the more I, you know, I felt extremely comfortable, and and, um, and uh, pretty soon there was no thought of living anyplace else. And I can't tell you how many people say, "Oh, Tippy, don't you miss living in the city?" I go, <laughs> "Miss what? Look what I look out on." You know, out of my bedroom window, there are three magnificent tigers. Across the river, the lions and the tigers go down practically a mile. Um, I hear the lions roaring all night, and I think some of you do too. Don't you? Don't some of you hear them? If you're in within five miles of, of Shambhala. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing, amazing um, place to live and... Um, and, and especially the reason why we're living, why, why this place is in existence. And um, you probably know that, that uh, all of these animals are born, all the lions and tigers are born in the United States to be sold as a pet or for financial gain. And it is uh, cruel to the animals and stupid for any human to buy one. Um, I'm working hard to try to get uh, bills passed in Washington. Uh, the bill was introduced, uh, Big Cats and Public Safety Protection Act. It was introduced uh, a, year, a year and a half ago. Still sits there. But I guess a lot of other bills are sitting there too. Uh, I don't know, I, I keep, every time I talk to anybody, I say, please write to your congressman, write to your senators, let's get this bill passed. Because not one more adult should be killed or, or maimed or a child killed or maimed because of this. And they say, because it's such a big business. And it is a big business. Kenneth Feld, who is uh, owner of Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, and his family started all of that business all over here. Oh, I did it. Kenneth Feld has accused me of trying to ruin his family business, <laughs> of ab having these animals in the circus, and beating them into doing the stupid tricks that they have to do. And you know what? He's right. I am. With <laughs> <laughs> our help, I hope we will succeed with this insanity. And um, of course, now it's a lame duck session, so. Maybe that's the time to do it. Who knows? I don't know. Um, I am I'm blown away by uh, how this room looks, and thank you so much. You've got all of me represented here, and uh, the table designs. Whoever did all of this, bravo, who did it? Well, thank you so much. I really do And, you know, everywhere I look, I feel very much at home. Yeah. And the, 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 the cuisine is wonderful, but it is just charming. And Jim, thank you for making me cry before I got up here. <laughs> yeah, that song has a special meaning for me, and it didn't turn out well, so that was... <laughs> that was for my favorite song, and it was all of me. <laughs> well, we've all had a romance or two that didn't go right, haven't we? We say yes. <laughs> you know, and I, I look over at these two tables, and uh, every one of these people have a, a true meaning in my life. 
It's awesome. Now I crack it. <laughs> now I'm uh, dealing with, with my cousin, Rebecca. And uh, I have to tell you a little bit about Rebecca. Rebecca is uh, in the movie business and she's behind the scenes and um, one tough lady too. Uh, but she was asked to go on a trip to China with one of our cousins. And um, he needed an interpreter in which he could trust. Uh, so she learned Chinese. Aww. So, what, you want Mandarin or Mandarin? Just... <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I think it is. And Chris Galucci has been with me since 1975, I believe, uh, when we were doing our movie. And, um, oh gosh, about six years ago, I passed the gavel as director of the preserve over to him, and it was the smartest thing I ever did because he is just excelling beyond belief in every phase. And it's not just feeding a few animals and uh, cleaning up after them, is it? There's oh. <laughs> a lot more to Trudy Farley has been with me since, since um, 87, 1987. We met when I was, uh, I was doing my book, the, I was on a tour, and um, uh, the, cat, the big cats of the cats were Shambhala. And she came to one of the signings, and that's how we met. And, um, uh, Trudy has been fearless with the big cats, but smart, because we're all still alive. <laughs> it's amazing. And uh, she went on to, uh, she runs the office now, and uh, uh, it's amazing what she's doing. Uh, Kent Madsen is my dentist, as well as a very, very good friend, and, and jewelry designer, and uh, infinitely fascinating man, Bill Dow. Is, uh, has been our staff photographer since we started the movie and um, has taken all of the pictures of the animals. Um, Janice has been one of our incredibly wonderful um, uh, volunteers who is very effective with all of the events that we put on. Uh, uh, Nancy. Mary. Excuse me. Um, Mary Alden is um, helping us with uh, stopping, stopping the bullet before it kills Acton. And has been absolutely brilliant in coming up with, or, you know, really letting us know what's going on and what we sh how we should possibly work this whole thing to, to really stop it. Karen Cable is uh, my best friend and manager, and we travel all over the world. Um, <laughs> she my shirt back. <laughs> Those are her words. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Ching, my wonderful, amazing friend, who uh, uh, we met when I was in. Uh, how long do I have to talk? I mean, I'm getting worried because I've got an awful lot to say. <laughs> on for a long time. I, I, I was born the same year you started this club. So, so you, I can. I can. I was a depression baby, as was my sister. Um, and, but anyway, uh, Ching and I met when I was uh, on two USO tours to Vietnam. And um, she had her own television show, her own production company, a beautiful family, a wonderful home, and um, uh, the second time I went back we met again and uh, we, made, we remained friends and um, when, when Saigon finally fell I couldn't find her. And uh, at that time, was it 1975, 76, 75, uh, I was uh, a volunteer for Food for the Hungry. And uh, we had a, a facility up in, uh, outside of Weimar, California, where we brought in about, oh, I don't know how many hundreds of Vietnamese refugees. And um, 
uh, we were finding them jobs, finding them sponsors, finding, uh, helping them integrate into our society, which is quite different from, especially then. Uh, and I mean, uh, how do you go through a super supermarket? That kind of thing, getting a driver's license, just helping them in small ways. And um, I brought in typists and uh, uh, seamstresses and uh, different things that we could, could find these people a job, a career. And um, you know what? All those girls love my fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, ah, wait a minute. It's good work. So I asked my own manicurist to come up from Sherman Oaks up to Weimar, uh, which is around the Sacramento area. And she came up every week and she taught, gave them a procedure to learn how to do the Juliet manicure. That was the one with the paper wraps, you know. And um, so every week she came up and uh, uh, we started out with about 60 women, and it, by the time the course was over, there were about 30 women who passed the course. We sent them down to um, um, Sacramento to beauty school, where they uh, passed their exams in English, and then off they went. Well, that started a whole thing, didn't it? <laughs> And you know something? I am so proud of that. I can't tell you. The only thing that really kind of gets in my craw is I don't have a percentage of it. <laughs> I mean, every town I go to, I see these manicuring shops, and I go. <laughs> anyway, um, during the same time that that all of these people were coming into Weimar. Uh, uh, I received a call from Ching, and she was crying. She was in um, Canada. I said, oh my God, Ching, what's the matter? And she said, nobody will bring me into the States. I said, well, who are you trying? And she listed off a number of very big stars with whom she had worked in Vietnam and Asia. Nobody. I said, well, you know what? You're on a plane tomorrow. And she came in, and um, uh, when I picked her up, I said, you know, we, 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 I went to get her luggage, and she said, I don't have anything. So um, we went to my house, and she lived with me, and we the same, same size, so we wore the same clothes. And, um, uh, you know, as time went on, I, uh, introduced her to a Hollywood agent and, and um, you know, Vietnamese, the Vietnamese were not popular at that time and there weren't any roles really of any consequence. Uh, so she got a job with the Catholic Charities and um, eventually she, uh, and then her children were able to come into the States and, but it was a, a, a very meaningful time for both of us. Uh, and uh, I am so proud of this woman. And th this is not the first time that she lost everything. Her home, her businesses, her every, ev everything, her country. She had lost it when she left n uh, North Vietnam and came into um, South Vietnam. So this was the second time she lost everything. And there she says, beautiful <laughs> and uh, brilliant. <laughs> My friend Kay has been one of our best um, volunteers, and she's, um, uh, you know, all the volunteers are friends as well as as volunteers, which is really kind of kind of wonderful and. Um, uh, I don't know what I do with that one. You now I can go around the second cable too, I guess. <laughs> no? Jeanette did my hair for me this morning. <laughs> you know, you know, you know when you when you come into a little tiny town and you're kind of finding your way around and finding what's going on in town and everything, imagine to find 
a hairdresser that would remain your own and only hairdresser for when would year when would what year was it? Early nineties, you know? Yeah, at least. But uh, well, you know her. She's got people who come who will drive four hours to have her do their hair and their color and pretty amazing. Rhea who takes care of her animals when we eat. And, uh, and I like my can of pineapple too. <laughs> yeah. Margaret brought me a can of pineapple. Uh, you know, I mentioned the, the 30s and being a depression child, and um, uh, you know, there's so many stories that go along with that. With my, but you know, uh, my parents never laid any of the problems on my sister and me. I mean, we were never really aware of it, which was pretty amazing. They were uh, very strong, very loving. Um, they were very firm with my sister and me. Uh, and I, you know, we were never ever spanked. That wasn't in um, our religion. And um, but if I did anything wrong, I would get a little this from my daddy, and we'd go sit on the steps outside, and we'd have a little talk. And it was a very firm talk, and one that I would never forget. Um, we were very, very much involved with the Lutheran Church. Both of my parents were involved with the church, and um, my sister and I went to Sunday school, and, and uh, we were both confirmed. And uh, you know, you get some pretty good rules and regulations on how to live your life through all of that. I didn't turn my phone off either. <laughs> I never. I never bothers me because I never turn my phone off. Well, my phone doesn't work where I live. My cell phone. So, no, so it's no big deal to me. I mean, I don't give my phone, my cell phone number to anybody because it won't work if it's away from, unless it's away from the preserve. So, uh, I just don't give my, my, my cell phone to anybody. It always is a shock when it does ring. Uh, but anyway, so there we were, um, back with the morals and the. Um, uh, the strict upbringing that my sister and I had. And, you know, all of those things I learned have fared me very well all my life. All my life. And, um, uh, you know, when you, when you start traveling, and, and um, uh, uh, I started all of that in Minneapolis when I got off the streetcar one day, and this lady came up to me and handed me her, her card, and she said, um, would you have your mother bring you down to Donaldson's department store? I'd like to have you model at our Saturday morning fashion shows. Wow. So I did. I had my mom bring me down, and I started my first job, I think it was about 15, and um, I think my daddy went crazy because I kept buying cashmere sweaters <laughs> because I didn't have to pay rent. <laughs> so I had a lot of cashmere sweaters, one in every color. And, um, um, but that that started that started uh, it took a lot of the shyness away that I was that I was born with. Another thing that happened to me when I was about eight years old that I'll never forget, and it, I, it empowered me so much that, uh, did any of you bite your fingernails? Yeah. Hard to stop, isn't it? It's difficult to stop biting your fingernails. And I remember walking home from grade school, I don't know what, I must have been about eight or eight, or eight years old or something, and I was walking up the hill to our house, I said to myself, I'm not going to bite my fingernails anymore. And you know what? I didn't. But that gave me, because when you have a habit 
habits are really kind of strictly. And are you all right, Karen? Just checking. <laughs> well, let us know what happens. Um, so you know, you know, but, but what happened later? Uh, I also became addicted to uh, cigarettes. I had um, uh, by then my family had, and I had moved from uh, Minnesota to California. And um, I continued my modeling there, and then New York was going, hey, come over here. So I went to New York and um, um, met another woman, Eileen Ford, who was powerful. A lady, not that old, definitely to be reckoned with. But anyway, uh, I was sent out to, um, uh, on a Chesterfield thing. And in order to do the commercial, I had to smoke. Well, you can't just... Because the smoke doesn't change. When you inhale, the smoke changes color. And so I had to learn how to smoke. Well, I mean, do you know what happened then? Oh, sure, she became addicted. You know, so I smoked. That, see, that was about 1951. And um, I smoked for... Until 1964, we were in the middle of filming Marnie, heavy movie, and uh, the cancer reports came out and said, "You know what? All of you people who smoke are going to die, and you're going to get really sick, and you're going to die earlier, and um, you'll look older faster." I think that's what got me. <laughs> And so I said, okay, and I put the cigarette out and then I had another one. And I went back to my biting my nails. And I said, I did it then. I, I quit biting my nails. I can do this too. And, um, and when I did the, the movie uh, Charlie Chaplin film, uh, The Countess of Hong Kong, with Marlon Brando and Sophia Loren, uh, there was a scene and Charlie wanted me to smoke and I said, Charlie, is it really necessary for me to smoke? I haven't smoked in, you know, uh, a couple of years now. And he said, no, I really want you to smoke. And I said, well, yeah, I can't fake it. And you know that. And he said, oh, so just do it. Well, it hurt so bad that I was reminded again of a dumb thing to do. What a dumb habit to have. Anyway, I didn't have another one after that, either. nor will I have. Unless it's a really big movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then things change, then the whole thing changes, doesn't it? <laughs> God. Oh, well. Um, you know, but, but all of this, this business that we're, we're doing with the, the lions and tigers and, and getting to know all of them getting to know the personalities of them, to get to know who they really are. And, uh, you know, you hear all of these people who are reading them, and some of them are telling you what a great pet they're going to be and how wonderful they are. They aren't. They are serial killers. They are literally, uh, they don't have a conscience gene, nor do they have a remorse gene. So they are able to do whatever they want and feel nothing. I mean, our, in, in, the, uh, in the human version of that, they're called psychopaths. Our jails are filled with them, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. And what is the job of the big cat, of the exotic cat, out in the wild? Yeah, their job is to their job is keeping Mother Nature's beautiful areas clean. So they take out the old animals, the sick animals, and the lame animals. And that's when they have their dinner. It's perfect. Mother Nature is always creating perfect things. And they are perfect. The problem is, is that, uh, you know, when, when, when we have people uh, coming to the preserve, if they're limping, or anything, boy, those cats are right up to the fence. It's scary. I had a, um, 
I had, uh, I fell off my elephant. Chris was taking care of, of the elephants from um, 1981 to 19, till 2005. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Uh, anyway, during the movie, I was, to, the, the Timbo was to pick me up and throw me on his back. And, and it wasn't working very well. And I kept falling off because he didn't figure out what I, why, 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 why was I doing this? And uh, at one point, my leg got caught under his trunk, and when he put the trunk down, it got caught around, I don't know, the tusk. I mean, it was really awful. And there I was swinging around. So anyway, my leg was not broken, but badly, badly bruised and uh, hurt a lot. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to go for a walk on that preserve until I can walk perfectly. I don't want those cats looking at me and saying, get her. She's next. Yeah. It's amazing the things we learn, and uh, boy, did we listen. And um, after the seventh accident, we said, no more hands on. Not at all. So when you come to the, see the this preserve and uh, meet the big cats, you will. Um, you will not be having a photograph taken with them. You will be taken for a walk on a leash. If you won't do any of that. You will simply worship them from afar. And I hope you do come because it's really an amazing day. It's um, and uh, you can bring your picnic and sit around the lake with us. And after you've been on tour, it's a wonderful day. And I, I, I really wish. Um, people of Acton would take advantage of the preserve because it is so beautiful. And we keep adding things to it. And, uh, oh, I was up in Bonega Bay and uh, I, I love going up there because it's easy. I, I, I really like that area. And um, I always go to the different places where we filmed and we were at, at the schoolhouse. I said, what happened to the jungle gym? I want that. And they said, oh, it's gone to a school. And I said, oh, I can't take it away from those kids. <laughs> I guess so. I got back to the uh, preserve and uh, talked to Chris and said, do you think our guys who build our fences would make a jungle gym? Would they copy it? And he said, let's see. So uh, Daniel came down and um, Bill Dow, our photographer, had, I asked him to take one of the, one of the scenes from the photograph, the scene where I'm sitting in front of the jungle gym with all those ribbons on top of it. Um, and so he copied it exactly. And this company um, copied it exactly, and they donated it. And I have it uh, in homage to um, the bird, because if, if I hadn't done the movie The Birds, I would not be doing what we're doing at Shambhala. So it's just a little tribute to the birds, just because of, just because of that. And um, it's, um, you can come and play on that. <laughs> and that's fun. But it's, uh, it's um, just kind of a little bit. And, you know, we have, uh, we have been donated uh, um, beautiful statues of the lions and uh, a couple of leopards and that sort of thing. So you can have photographs of them. <laughs> Not the real ones. <laughs> anyway, um, do any of you have any questions about anything? I've done some incredible movies. Oh, good. Um, in the movie that was about how the girl. The girl. Um, is that your account? That is my account. It is my account. Uh, in fact, when um, when uh, they decided to do this movie, they asked me. They had to get my permission in order to do it, and uh, I said, "I will. Uh, I will give you that permission if you will make sure that I am involved with it being correct." that there aren't any lies or, uh, you know, kind of stories that are not true. And it is factual. Uh, you know something? 
it was it was tragic. It was awfully frightening, and well, frightening is a good word, but um, it was it was so sad because to uh, I had such a good working relationship with Hitchcock when we were first doing the birds. It was just absolutely fabulous. He and his wife were my drama coaches because I had never done a movie before. And um, I mean, doing all those commercials that I did uh, give you a good technical background, but they certainly don't do anything to, you know, how do you break down a script? How do you develop this character which you're going to become? How do you do, you know, how do you do all of that? And um, so they were my drama coaches, and everything was just so fabulous. And I was working with Rod Taylor and Mr. Tandy, and uh, you know it was a um, it, it it was huge. And um, and uh, towards the end of the birds, I noticed that he kept staring at me, and I thought, uh, I don't know. Have any of you been the object of anyone's obsession? It is pure hell. And all I could think of, why is he doing this? Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put up with it. I won't. And I, I put up with it until finally the demands were so bad that, and you know why he made these demands on me? I had, I had won a Golden Globe, and I had been asked to go to New York to accept a photo play award on the Tonight Show. And I looked at the schedule, and I, I talked to Jim Brown, and, um, who was the assistant director, and I said, are there three days here? Are there two days? He said, yes. Yeah. So I went to Mr. Hitchcock, and I related this story, that um, I had been asked to go to New York to accept uh, the photo play award on the uh, Tonight Show, and I, we have those days, and I, I would really like to go. And he looked at me. And he said, what do you think you've done to deserve this? I went, uh, I won a golden globe. <laughs> and all of a sudden, these demands were put on me that I, I, um, I was so repulsed that I demanded to get out of the contract right then and there, excluding the fact that I would finish the movie, Marnie. And um, but after that, I said, I am out. And he said, I'll ruin your career. And he did. He wouldn't let me out of the contract. He kept, kept paying me my $600 a week. Yeah, I mean, that much. And you know what? It's all gone. <laughs> uh, but the, the, uh, the finishing of the film was tense, that it was awful, I and mean, it was, and why? What was the reason for this? At one point, his wife, Alma, came up to me, and she said, Tippi, I'm so sorry you have to go through this. And I went, Alma, you could stop it. And her eyes glazed over, and she turned around and walked away. But I wasn't the first one that this had happened to. Uh, apparently, the first movie he did um, uh, all those years ago, he hit on the actress, and there were many others that he did the same thing. They did. I was. The, I was the first one who said, "You know what? This man. It, I will. You, you can never take away the talent the man has, the the brilliance in his directing ever." That is there to stay, but as a man, he doesn't have. I mean, somebody has to say, stop it. So, anyway, uh, uh, I've been chastised by a few very, you know, for the, the movie. You know, that's all they see is the movies, and um, that I should have just not said anything. Well, that's not the way we work anymore, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. So anyway, that's a tragedy that, that um, uh, I will always be sorry for because I, w I would love to have gone on to make, you know, tons of other wonderful films. And uh, he did ruin my career, but he didn't ruin my life. <laughs> anyway, thank you.
Okay, returning back to some lunch and acti activities. Um, we're going to be closing the silent auction in about two minutes or so. So if you have anything you would like to bid on that you're interested in, now's the last chance. So go, up, go ahead and check on your items. And um, I'll have the raffle committee begin to prepare closing the auction. Can we get the culinary arts student server, their teacher, Mrs. Koo, to gather up here for a photograph and a bow? They I know they're in the kitchen. Are they gone? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wish I had caught them. Um, I'll just say, I'll just state this real briefly. Um, the culinary arts program at Vasquez High School is a shining star for the high school and for our community. And many students have moved through that program to receive regional and national awards and scholarships through the years. We're really fortunate to have that wonderful program available to students. And they did a really nice job today with our salad and our dessert and their service. So if you, again, will remember the tip jars on your table, I know sometimes we just forget activity today. Um, okay, and then in closing, I want to uh, thank Jim Romady again for playing so beautifully. Thank you to Distinctive Catering for our lunch today. Uh, our good friend, Seal Miller, for helping with the sound. It's never easy. Linda Marshall with Acton Flowers. She did our beautiful centerpieces. Very, very unusual and different for us. Beautiful flowers. The beautiful flowers are from us to be in there for you to take home as well. Um, to our school representatives, I think they may have gone. They always have to go early. But thanks to them again. Photographer Bill Dow, thank you for sharing and taking so many. We've really added just a huge sparkle to the, to the room today. And this room isn't easy to work with. <laughs> but, but it looks great. Really, really great. And Tippy, again, most sincere appreciation. You're just a, you're an intelligent, uh, elegant, tenacious uh, ambassador. Yes. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> um, and last but not least, last but not least, all the Women's Club members, I'm really grateful for your tremendous efforts uh, arranging every detail, beautiful decorating and printing, and those working in the kitchen, your many generous donations, raffle and wine, everything is superb as usual. 